Look at what I found in the lot after the last fish show I was at. Just kidding. This is a carbon filtration water system, whole house water filter system that I got uh, from Springwell Water Systems. What I'll be doing is hooking this up in my house. So the first step it says to do is fill this with water and let it soak for 48 hours. So I'm gonna walk you through the steps of hooking up the inlet valve, the bypass valve, filling this up with water, letting it soak, and we'll go from there with the rest of the install. Stick around. Hi, Dad. All right, first step, take the tank head, line it up with the pipe in the middle, press it down firmly and screw it in in a clockwise direction as I'm doing right here. And make sure your threads are straight or you'll be backing this out and doing it over. Once it gets to a point that you can no longer hand tighten it, don't be like me and use the sharp end of that screwdriver. Use the blunt end. Uh, fortunately, there was no damage done to this, but seriously, don't do what I did here. Use the blunt end. Turn it till it's tight and you'll be set. What you're gonna do now is take the bypass valve and screw that onto the tank head. You're gonna do this using the fittings on the back of this. Line it up. As you can see, I'm having a little bit of a difficulty and you're just gonna secure them by turning them in a clockwise fashion as well, like I'm doing here. You don't need to use a wrench or anything else, just hand tighten. And what you're now gonna do is take two of those MNPT fittings and secure those onto the bypass valve. Same thing, uh, just screw these on in a clockwise fashion. Once you get them both on there, have them finger tight, point them the direction you wanna work with, and you should be good to go. Once both fittings are on and securely in place, take the hose bib, you're going to attach it to the input valve first. Once that hose bib is on there, run your garden hose over. As you can see, I'm gonna start filling this with water. And you're gonna let this run for about five minutes or until all the water coming out is running clear. Once you verify that other side to be clear, you're gonna do the same exact thing from the output. You're gonna hook up the hose bib and you're gonna run uh, water through there for about five minutes or until that water is completely clear. All right, now, once you've done that, you're going to put the neoprene jacket, the neoprene sleeve over the water filtration tank and zip it up and you're all set for the next step. Oh, and here, my wife is coming out to check on the progress with her mimosa. You need helpers in all types, people. Now, the next step is to let this sit for 48 hours before you actually attempt to use it or install it. Okay, so real quick word to the wise. Uh, first things first, you're gonna need help getting this down the steps if you're putting it in a basement because not only is this a heavy tank, but it's now full of water. All right, so my wife helped me get this down here. And what my dad and I are gonna do for this install is we're gonna do this part last. We're gonna turn the water off and disconnect this last. First thing we're gonna do is mount a board right here so that we can put our shutoff valves. We can kind of have a nice clean spot for our sediment filter. All right, we're gonna put that up on here. All right, so what you wanna do if you're doing this, you know, get a board from Lowe's. It's like in their craft section. Make sure it's level. You're gonna mount it right here. Now, your size, your distance, all that is gonna vary depending on your basement setup. So I'm not gonna go into specifics of distance or any of that. So what we're gonna do, like I said, we're gonna put that board here and we're gonna start running our pecs and all of our 90 degree couplers, our shutoff valves. I'll be filming that. Um, and what I'll do is a voiceover narration uh, once it's finished filming, that way it's really clear what we have to do. So stick around. Uh, I'll have a list of tools in the description of this video and you'll also see what we're using as we do this. So stick around, we'll get started. Now do not forget to put Teflon tape and pipe dope at any section where your pipes are joining that water will travel through. You wanna make sure this is as watertight as possible because one, you don't want your product to leak and two, you don't wanna to have to come back and take this thing apart to fix a leak later. So make sure you're putting the Teflon tape and pipe dope. Also, one last thing. If you go to the big box store and ask for Teflon tape, don't take the one they give you out of the box. It's always gonna be some cheap version like they gave me. Go look for, I think, Odie's is one that I really like and we're using on this product. So hopefully this helps. Get to taping those things up 
and we'll get to the next section. So what you want to do before you start cutting and laying the tubes or the pipes out is you want to get a tape measure and measure the distance from your tie-in to where you think you're going to want your pipes or your tubes to run on the other side of your water filtration system so you get a really good estimate. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the saying or if it still exists these days, but way back in the day when I was working on jobs like this, measure twice, cut once. So get your measurements all set, verify your distance, and then begin getting to work and making those cuts. Now, if you're using these shark bite push on connectors, a word to the wise is you want to take your PEX tubing and you want to hold the connector next to it and put a mark down below where you want to push it to. That's going to be your point of demarcation. So you'll know that you've pushed far enough. Now, another beautiful thing with these shark bite connectors is that when you do have a solid connection, there'll be a green tab that shows up uh, verifying that you've pushed the connector far enough. All right. So again, two things you're going to want to do. Mark where you want it to go, push it down to that point, and then verify you have the green line on your shark bite connector. And I'll show you guys that in just a second. There you go. Green is good to go. Okay, now that we've made some cuts behind the scene, we have attached our first shutoff valve, as you can see there to the left of my, left of my hand. And now we're just measuring to make sure we're going to go far enough over before we make this next cut on our PEX tube and get to work. All right, so now what I'm doing is we're taking our pre-cut uh, length of pipe right here, length of tube, and I'm marking it against where I'm going to cut off on the water tie-in. All right, I want to make sure that we're going to seat this down far enough and that we still have enough pipe to get over to the other side of the water filtration tank. What I'm then going to do since we're marking things is I'm going to take a level and just get a rough idea of where this is for level. And then my dad over there is going to mark it on his side on the wall where we want this to line up. So that in theory, when everything is ready to rock and roll and we're hooking this all up, we have a level pipe uh, running over to our water filtration system. Now what we're doing here is measuring the length of pipe that we're going to need to come from the input of our water filtration system. All right. So this is where it will screw in and it's going to come out of here, go down and then tie into where we're coming in from our main water line. Just want to make sure that it's far enough from the wall where we're positioned is proper and that when this comes out, it's going to go over far enough so that I can tie into that other length of tube that we've pre-cut. And as you can see now, we have it coming out of our input. We've got a 90 degree going down. The next part uh, for us, what we're going to do is put a connector on there and we're going to connect it to our tie-in that's going to come off of our water line in. So here, real basic, I'm just going to show you me doing it. Just some elbow grease. It really isn't too, too complicated. Also, put your clamp on first before you tie this into anything else. All right, that's one of those little things you can forget and then be like, oh, shoot, I have to go back and find a way to get a clamp in here. So check your work. Make sure clamps are in place before you start securing things. Let's move on. All right. When it's actually time to hook this up, your pipe will not be standing straight up like that. The beauty is these things bend so we can just kind of get it out of the way. Uh, what we're doing now is this going to be from our output that's going to tie into the water line that goes back into the house. So we're just making sure that's on there securely. I'm crimping it down in place and we'll be moving on. All right, so I'm just going to show you this part. It's not even the best angle, but if you think you're going to crimp these shark bite crimps down by hand, it's not happening, all right? You gotta go out and you have to buy a special crimp tool. It costs money, but it will give you a secure connection. I guarantee you I've had no water coming out of anywhere that I crimped with this tool. All right, now you're going to install your sediment filter. There should be a mounting bracket that came with this. It also should have screws for mounting it to a board as well as the screws for screwing into the sediment filter so it mounts below. Make sure this is level and an easy to access place because in about six months when you have to change that sediment filter, 
you're going to need to get in there. Uh, pretty basic stuff. If you have any questions about this, just drop it in the comments. All right, I didn't get a great angle of us connecting the output that goes into the house, but here you're going to see I'm scraping off some residue on the PEX tube uh, that's coming from the main water line in because you want a really smooth surface before you apply those shark bite fittings, those press on fittings. If you don't have that, you won't have a clean connection and first chance is you won't get it on. But if by some act of God that you're freakishly strong and you do, you probably won't have a good connection and you might run into issues. So make sure you have a bucket underneath when you're doing this. Uh, the initial cut makes a huge mess, but again, it's only water, it'll dry up. And now what you're gonna do is secure the fitting on there so that your water line from the house is connected to the line feeding your filtration system. And there it is, the finished product. Let's go over a few things. Okay, so we got everything installed. Uh, pretty much every joint held up except for one. We've got a slight leak. So let me show you what we ran into and then I'm gonna talk about how we're gonna fix it. We're gonna do that and we'll test this system out and I'm hoping we can rock and roll. All right, let's check this out. Okay, so really basically, I'll just show you the system real quick. We come in here, all right, we're using shark bite push on connectors. We hit shut off valve, comes all the way over. Boom, another connector, another connector. Come into a one inch. Inlet, outlet, another one inch to three quarter packs. Connect in here. I've got a little condensation there too, so we'll address that today. And then over here, well, you guys can see this. We've got a drip, so we got that there. Everything else is sealed up tight. So what we're gonna use is put some pipe dope on this instead of Teflon tape. We're gonna see all that holds up first. Uh, if that doesn't take, we're we'll back to the drawing board. So let's get started. All right, so I did not show you that uh, we had to actually put Teflon tape on this first, and then we put pipe dope over top of it. All right, so two-step process, and any plumbers out there, please be easy on me. I'm not a plumber. I'm just a home repair guy. Uh, but yeah, we put some Odie's Teflon tape on there, and then we hit it with, uh, I forget the name of the pipe dope. I have it coming up next. A nice coat of that, and then we inserted it back into the sediment filter, and we were good to go. All right, so let's look at the final product here and then we'll do a quick recap, uh, kind of what I did. Um, yeah, we'll leave it at that. So obviously we got our water line coming in, we got our main, boom, we come up here, we have three quarter inch line to three quarter inch pecs. This was already here with the house. So we're using sharp bike connectors, push connectors. Come over here, we do a shut off valve initially. And this will make sense when you see uh, the final product here, right? So we come over with our shut off behind our sediment filter come out, you got another 90 to another 90, which comes into the input of the filtration tank, all right? Now it's set to come in, set to go out, we come out of the output here. Again, we're using all shark bite connectors here uh, with their crimp system. And we come out of here, uh, and this is gonna be one inch to three quarter on this end, so female to male, come out here. Now here is where we detected some leaks earlier. So what we did was like a goofball, there were four extra gaskets that came in this package. I used one on here thinking that it needed it. Um, they're actually replacement gaskets for this product here. All right, so the four, the four replacement gaskets that are in the bag in the box are for this. So I took the gasket off, did four revolutions of Teflon tape and then covered it with pipe dope. The pipe dope we used is Pro Dope. The dope is dope, you'll never smoke, I hope. And then we used OD Fast Tape. We used some other cheap version yesterday and it completely sucked. So this worked great, all right? Sediment filter here and come out. Same thing was happening on this end, all right? And that's not water, that is the pipe dope drying and curing, all right? Come over here to another shut off valve. And right, we come out, boom, 90, back into the PEX, come up here. And there you have it. There's your PEX line. All right, so why the shutoff valves? Let's take a look. Because when you have to change your sediment filter every six months or so, you don't want to have to shut off the whole water to the house and have it all running right into here. That's a lot of pressure and a lot of unnecessary water that's gonna spill all over you and probably make a mess. Because when you take that off, you'll probably have a little blowback. So what we do is we put a shutoff valve here right when it comes into this system and another one here, all right? So we shut both these off earlier when we were fixing these leaks 
and had zero problems. So at first I was questioning the shut off valve, but this is crucial. Um, and my helper, my dad, who will be in this video in a second, brought up a good point. Also prevents all the water from the house coming back in. Um, I removed one of these filters, a similar GE filter at my rental we were just in. My three-year-old was with me. It blew water all over the place. Uh, I wasn't filming it because you guys would probably have loved that. It was hysterical. So yeah, shut off, water in. So we don't get any back, back flow into here either. So let me take a step back. You can see the whole product. It doesn't take up a ton of space, which is nice, all right? Um, I will be mounting those, uh, the rest of this PEX pipe to the wall a little bit later. Uh, I don't know what's behind that wall, but it was a real pain in the butt to drill into. Um, we got the mounting board there. Any questions about how that was mounted, drop it in the comments. Yeah, so we'll give one real quick recap and then we'll be done. So also, uh, one more thing with these shark bites is they rotate, all right? So if you have to spin this pipe, obviously I'm not gonna spin this now, but if you need to disconnect this, when we screwed this off, unscrewed it, it's spun in place here, which is really helpful. Um, that's not always the case when you're doing plumbing work, apparently. So yeah, that's that. Um, this is my dad. He is the guy responsible for me knowing how to do half the stuff I know how to know <laughs> and then bailing me out when I can't do the other stuff. So for this job, I'm being dead serious, DIY or not, make sure you have some help because he bailed me out on some really hard spots. Um, other than that, guys, Drop the comments in the questions. Anything else? I got, got one comment for you. Where these, where the lines have been crimped, okay, you can spin them on there. Uh, so without worrying about having to leak because they're crimped on there, but they will rotate on there if you have to because when we took this piece off, we had to rotate yeah. there. Good so point. Cool. So you can rotate in place. Thank you. That was perfect. So yeah, I mean, any questions about what we did with these shark bites? Um, if I can't answer it, I'll text my dad. He'll answer it for me or get back to you. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's it, man. Um, I'll go pour a glass of water real quick and show you what that looks like, and we'll be out of here. Okay, now I've already run all the water out of here, um, but what you should do after you install the system is run this for 10 to 15 minutes, and we'll get all the extra sediment and stuff out. So what we're gonna do though is pour a glass of water take a look at it see how it looks well before I didn't show you but there was sediment and all types of nasty stuff floating in it so what we'll do now is we'll take a quick sip and see how it is it doesn't taste like a swimming pool it doesn't smell like a swimming pool and I don't feel any grit in my teeth I'm gonna say so far even without testing this water quality that this works. Okay, I really did my best to try and show this install, uh, but it was kind of difficult to film a lot of this. So I hope that you know by watching this and listening to the voiceover that I did that explained some of the steps that we took and then showing you the final product uh, really helps. If you do have any questions, just drop them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, if you're dealing with PVC or copper, it may be a whole different ball game, okay? Um, I'm not versed in that, so I can't speak to what the process would be, but I know when you're dealing with PEX, it's pretty simple. You cut it and use the press on connectors like we did, uh, get the proprietary tools that SharkBite made me purchase and you should be all good. So I hope this tutorial helped. Make sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys later.